glad you came to join us. This is week two. Everybody say two. This is week two in our series, Bless Your Heart. Turn to one of your friends and say, bless your heart. You got, you, you, if you're from the South, you say, bless your heart. <laughs> bless your heart. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. So, so, so we are, we are in this series. Last week we said this. What if the blessing was more than a prayer over your food? What if, it, what if it was more than a prayer when somebody sneezes or, oh, I got an unexpected gift, that's a blessing? Or, 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 or how you feel when everything's going great in your life? What if the blessing is bigger? What if it's bigger? What if there's really supernatural power in a blessing? I, I, I think last week we kind of proved that's true, didn't we, guys? I, mean, I think we proved there's power in that. So, so I want to read sort of the theme verse for this series, if you will, Ephesians 1, 3. Then we're going to pray together. We're going to get right in the Word for today. Ephesians 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your blessing in our lives. I ask you, Holy Spirit, we've already sung that you're in the room. We believe you're not only in this room, but you're in every living room, every bedroom, every kitchen, every hallway, every car, every person that's listening, whether live or later, God, we believe you're in their room. And I ask you to speak to me and give me entrance into the hearts of men and women, boys, girls, young and old. And as we encounter this moment with your word, don't let us leave this encounter the same, but let us be changed and transformed by your word and by your spirit. In Jesus' name, and if you agree, say yes. So, so, so last week, we talked about how we, we got to believe the blessing, right? We got to believe in it. If you, if you don't believe in it, you're probably not going to receive it. But this week, we want to talk about receiving the blessing, because I could have something I wanted to give to you, but if you don't receive it, I've offered it, but it, you ain't getting it, right? So, so, so really the premise for today, and, and, and to set the tone for where we're going, is this statement right here. The blessing is never earned by works. It's received by grace through faith. So the blessing can never be earned by works. Religion's gonna tell you that the blessing can be earned, and you spend your life trying to earn the blessing of God We'll talk a little bit more about that throughout the series. I started to say today, but really throughout the series. But, but the blessing is never earned by works, it's received by grace through faith. To really see a picture of that, we're gonna look at a very special blessing that was given by Jacob. So, so last week we talked about the priestly blessing in Numbers. This week we're gonna talk about the blessing of Ephraim and Manasseh. And this blessing of Ephraim and Manasseh was given by Jacob, their grandfather, to his grandsons just, just moments or days before he died. So, so, but to do that, I gotta give the story some context. And, and then we're gonna read a few verses and we'll see what we can learn from these verses in this story in our lives. So, so, so first of all, I, I'm not gonna assume anybody's a Bible scholar. But, but maybe somebody went to Sunday school and you heard about this dude, Jacob. Right, so Jacob, uh, you know, we always talk about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Abraham was a father of faith, and then, then he started this whole lineage, and then we get to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob uh, was his daddy's favorite, uh, or, or excuse me, no, 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 that's Joseph. J Jacob did not know where he stood with his father because Jacob was a twin. He was born, and, he, and Esau beat him out the womb. So he started life losing. 
He started life coming in second. So, so, so he was, matter of fact, the Bible says he was hanging on to Esau's heel. Can you imagine, you know, the, 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 the uh, midwife or whatever's there, and here comes Esau, and then here comes Jacob hang, hanging on to his heel. And he, he just trying to get his blessing. So, so, so Jacob was a mama's boy. His daddy loved Esau. He tricked his dad into blessing him later in life over Esau. Later in life, he loved a girl named Rachel. She was beautiful, but his father-in-law tricked him in, 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 into taking the, the, the less beautiful, shall we say, not as comely sister, not, a, you know, not as becoming sister uh, uh, Leah. And, and, and Leah was a little, shall we say, homely. Bless her heart. God, bless. That's good. Bless, bless her heart. Bless her heart. Why did I not think of that? That's great. That's great. Bless her heart. And, and the way he got tricked, I mean, you know, he, he just went into the tent and they didn't have electricity, so it's dark. He does what you do on honeymoons, wakes up the next morning when the lights turn on and he goes, whoa, who are you? He had worked seven years for this girl. So, that's a long time to work for a woman. And, and, and then finally, he, so, he, so he has to work another seven years. So he works 14 years to marry Rachel. Then Rachel dies in childbirth. I mean, I, when you tell all this, you know, you've heard all these stories in Sunday school maybe or, or, or somewhere, but when you put them all together, Jacob had a rough life. Then, then he, has, he has all these sons and, 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 oh, oh, no, no, wait, before that. Then he tricks Laban, his father-in-law, into blessing him. Laban had tricked him, so he tricks him back. By some, and he does it by some pretty uh, crazy crossbreeding of goats, sheep, and cows. And he ends up massively blessed, but it's all because Jacob is striving. Jacob's name means deceiver. And so he's, Constantly living in deception. Then he has a favorite son named Joseph. He thinks Joseph's died, but really his brothers, uh, his other sons, had sold him, sold Joseph into slavery. He didn't know that. Then there's a famine that comes to land, and finally, uh, they're all reunited in Egypt under Joseph's leadership, his favorite son, and he finds out Joseph is alive. He's 130 years old, and he finds out my son, whom I thought was dead for decades, is really alive. He's about to die, and here we are. In Genesis 48, verses one through five, the rest of the story is, is many, many verses. We're only, only gonna read five. Now, it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told, indeed, your father's sick. And he took him with him, uh, took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And Jacob was told, look, your son Joseph is coming to you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat up in the bed. Then Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan, and he blessed me. And he said to me, behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply and multiply you, and I will make of you a multitude of people and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. So even in all that turmoil, Jacob wrestles with God and he gets a blessing. God finally blesses him and that's the promise that he gets. And he says, then he says to Joseph, now your two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt, before I came to you in Egypt, they're mine. Just like Reuben and Sim Simeon, they shall be mine. So, so let me kind of demonstrate this story. Can, can, can you just follow me right over here? You're going to be old man Jacob. I know you're not an old man, but you're going to be, you're, you're a very young man, but, but you're gonna, we're going to pretend that you're old man Jacob. And so, so, so come here, boys. Come here, boys. They didn't know I was going to do this. I didn't know I was going to do this either. I decided... So, so I'm, I'm Joseph, and I bring my sons, and, and you're the oldest, 
So, so the oldest would be blessed. So kneel down right here because you'd be blessed by his right hand and then you'd be blessed by his left hand. And so, so, so granddaddy Jacob is going to do something you don't deserve. He's going to give you a blessing that is beyond what you, you're not his son, you're a grandson. You should have to wait a long time for a blessing. And so he puts him right here. But then uh, uh, old man Jacob crisscrosses, he takes his right hand and he puts it here and he takes his left hand and he puts it here and Joseph says, Daddy, what are you doing? You're blind. <laughs> and he tries to fix it and, and Jacob won't, uh, won't let him. He goes, no, 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 son. I know what I'm doing. And he crosses the blessing. All right, everybody give them a hand. They did a, they did a good job. You got it? You with me? Everybody with me online? Everybody with me? Okay. So, so he, he does this and he blesses them and he adopts them as his own, blessing them beyond what they could earn or imagine what they've ever done on their own, where they didn't deserve it. And, and then he switches that blessing though and the second in line gets, they're both blessed, but the second in line gets the firstborn's blessing. Now, just remember that story for a few minutes, and let's think about this. Out of that, I think there's four things, very quickly, that, that, the, that we can learn from these boys, these grandsons, receiving a blessing they did not deserve, and why Jacob did it, because Jacob understood something, and we're going to walk through each one quickly. Number one, so, so, so here's the benefits of receiving the blessing. And Jacob knew these boys will have these benefits that I never had. Here's number one. You're, you're blessed to be secure. The blessing brings security. When we're blessed, we become secure. And when we become secure, we soar. Some of you didn't catch that. When we're, when we're secure, we soar. When we don't, when we're insecure, we're stuck. Alan Wright in his book, The Power to Bless, says that the blessing binds people into the love of God. It straps them in like a seat belt, straps you in where you are safe and secure. And if you're, if you're, if you're strapped in by that seat belt, Life may crash, but you're safe. You're safe. People only dare greatly when they, 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 they feel like they're ultimately safe. And they only feel safe when they are unconditionally loved. Let me say that again. People only dare greatly when they feel ultimately safe. And they only feel safe when they feel unconditionally loved. Loved. First John 4, 18, we know it well, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected or made mature in love. Jacob never felt blessed. He never felt blessed. He, he always had to strive to get the blessing. You're going to hear me say that a lot today, but, 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 but I want us to get it. He never knew if his dad really loved him. His dad loved Esau, and he never really knew if he wanted him to be blessed, so Jacob was always conniving, deceiving. That's what his name means. As I said, deceiver. So he's always trying to work to get the blessing. I don't know about you, but I felt that way in my life. I felt that way in my life. Much of the way God desires to show his love to us is through family, whether that's natural or spiritual. It's in the belonging to a family, a community who love us and bless us in spite of our failures, not because of our accomplishments, but in spite of our failures that we feel safe, secure, and then we can soar and get unstuck. If you're taking notes, you to write this down. We all have a longing for belonging. We all have a longing for be longing. We want to belong just because we be, not because of what we've done. Now, now, now in his book, um, Alan gives us a, a cycle that happens. It's a, he calls it a worldly cycle of fear and insecurity when a blessing is not 
receive. Can we put that on the screen? So, so when the blessing is withheld or the blessing is not received, you have this longing for acceptance, right? And so I think, what do I do? What must I do to be blessed? Then I, 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 I think I can't do enough to be blessed. I fail, right? Then what comes? Shame. Well, I'm not blessed, so something must be wrong with me. Then that produces insecurity. What if I'm never good enough? What if I'm never good enough? But watch how that cycle changes when the blessing is received. When the blessing is received, we have the same longing for acceptance. That's, that's, that's in your life. But now you already say, I am blessed. Somebody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Come on at home, say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Right in your house, shout it, I am blessed. Now then, I feel like I belong. If I don't belong to people, I belong to God. If, I, if everybody rejects me, I still belong to the Father. I'm His, I'm chosen. I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Now I'm wanted, I'm accepted for who I am, not for what I've done. Now I'm secure. And watch this, now I can stretch, I can grow, I can be confronted. I, 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 can, I can be challenged without fear of failure. Why? Because I'm free. I'm free. See, see, old Jacob didn't want his newly discovered grandsons to ever be insecure. So he said, remember in that verse? They are mine. <laughs> God, God looked at Sita and said, she's mine. He looked at David, he, he's mine. Daddy God said, Shay, you're, you're mine. I loaned you to your mom and daddy, but you're mine. And, and here's something I'm learning. See, see, he wanted them to belong. Something I'm learning is this, that you're never too old to need to receive a blessing of belonging. Number two, number two. Second thing that happens when we receive the blessing is we become blessed to be free. Insecurity gets us stuck. It gets us stuck in, in fear and shame and condemnation and guilt and striving. Yes, you can get stuck in your striving. Write that down and think about it all week because you think, no, I'm striving so I won't be stuck. No, you're stuck because you're striving. And, 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 and listen, the blessing helps you get unstuck. If the blessing is powerful enough, watch this, it can overshadow all of yesterday's sorrow, yesterday's regret, and totally eclipse your pain. Through the power of the blessing, it's possible to live as though we have forgotten all our failures and disappointments. Some of you say, that ain't possible, PD. I can't do it. Well, in our story, remember what was the oldest son's name? Manasseh. Everybody say Manasseh. M-A-N-A-S-S-E-H. And, and in, in the blessing of Ephraim and Manasseh, Jacob's blessing, he gives us some clues. See, the, the, the first 30 years, or, or, or Manasseh's name gives us some clues, is what I'm trying to say. In the first 30 years of Joseph's life, he had, he had some pretty rough things going. You, we talked about all Jacob's stuff. Joseph had some stuff. He had some stuff. He, he, his brothers were jealous. He was thrown in a pit and sold into slavery. He was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. He was hated, abused, rejected, enslaved, falsely imprisoned. But in all that, God kept promoting him and he rises to the top. Then as the ruler of a foreign land, he marries the daughter of a priest and they had a son and he named him Manasseh. And he said, I'm naming him Manasseh because God has made me forget all my trouble. See, in Hebrew, the name Manasseh sounds like the Hebrew word for forget. So every time he said Manasseh's name, he remembered, God made me forget. 
Of course, he didn't literally forget, but he forgot the pain, like a mother forgets the pain of childbirth. She doesn't really forget it, <laughs> but she forgets it. And she says the joy of the baby overshadows the pain of the delivery. And now Joseph, in other words, is saying the joy of what God is doing in my life is greater than the pain that I have experienced for 30 years. That's why he could forgive his brothers. That's why he could release them. That's why Joseph could be an example. We, like Joseph, can come to a point where we understand this. Your past troubles do not define you. Instead, God wants to use them to refine you. Let me say that again. You don't have to be defined by your past, but by God's blessing, you can be refined through your past. One of the ways that he does that, like I said, is when you receive the power of a blessing. You're, you're, you're blessed to be free, free from guilt, free from shame, free from condemnation, free from striving, free from all the pain. Or you could say it with our word for the year, you're blessed to be free to move forward. Somebody say forward. forward. Come on, somebody say forward. forward. The blessing gets you unstuck. And not only does it get you unstuck, it makes beauty out of ashes. It makes something gorgeous out of something tragic. There, there is this uh, Japanese pottery called kintsugi, or kintsugi, kintsugi. I, I'm probably not saying it right. So don't at me, I, I know I'm not saying it right. When you look it up, they don't say it for you. They spell it, and I don't speak Japanese. It's K-I-N-T-S-U-G-I, Ken Suji, I guess. It means golden joinery. It's the process of mending broken ceramics used by gold-dusted lacquer. So they take this golden glue and they, and they repair this broken vessel, this broken ceramic. And, and, and when they do, it makes the pottery not only more beautiful, but more valuable than it was before. So people pay more money to own the broken, the repaired vessel, the restored vessel, than they would of the original. And, and, and all the while, it makes it useful for its original purpose. So it's, it's fulfilling its purpose, and it's more beautiful than it was before. That is your life. Listen, the blessing is the golden glue in your shattered life. It's not a cover-up. It's restoration process. It's not trying to just make something do. It's making something better than new. It's making something more beautiful. That's how God takes uh, all of your broken pieces and he never throws them away. He never gets rid of them. He just puts his golden glue in it. And that golden glue is the blessing. Number three, you're blessed to be twice fruitful. Somebody ought to get excited about that. I don't know about you, but I, I don't want to just be fruitful. I want to be twice fruitful. How are we twice fruitful? Well, the firstborn in this story of Jacob's blessing of his grandsons, we learned about Manasseh's name. Remember Manasseh? Had a purpose. Well, what about Ephraim's name? This time, Joseph's in a different place. The first time is his first revelation of how God had made him forget. But, but now, not only has he forgotten his pain, but he's extremely blessed. Everything Joseph touched prospered. So he names his second son Ephraim. Literally, it would be Ephraim. Because in Hebrew, there are singular nouns, there's plural nouns, and there's something called dual nouns. A dual noun always ends with A-Y-I-M. For example, the Hebrew word for day is yom. If you want to have two days, it's yom-I-M. 
So Joseph took the word for fruitful, f ray, and he made it dual, f ray ayam. So he's saying, this child is because I'm doubly fruitful. I'm twice fruitful. Joseph is saying, I'm double fruitful. See, the blessing, watch this, releases God's supernatural power and grace in your life. Now, 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 now you get, and, and, and what happens is you get to reap of the fruitfulness of that supernatural empowerment. So God empowers you to do things that you couldn't do on your own, and then you get to reap the fruitfulness of that. But, but I want you to see something. The blessing releases you to work harder and to be diligent, not because you're earning the blessing, but because you're already blessed. Now, now there's a blessing in working. If, if you're diligent in your job, you're a diligent man, as you've been diligent, God will, or, or, I mean, God, man will promote you, right? I mean, like, show up to work. Do a good job. Hone your craft. How many of you know there's fruitfulness in that? Come on. We're not saying, we're not denying. You don't even have to be saved to be fruitful. But Gregory would be limited to Gregory's ability. And no matter how great Gregory is, that's still a limitation. But that's one fruitfulness. But when Gregory is blessed, even if Gregory didn't do anything that was fruitful, God would bless him and he would still have fruitfulness from the blessing. So that's one blessing. But if Gregory is fruitful and, and then he understands he's blessed, then he gets empowered to do things that he could never do on his own, and then he's doubly fruitful. That's the fruit of his own effort, and then it's the fruit of God's blessing and the fruit of God's supernatural empowerment in his life. You are double fruitful. <laughs> Somebody ought to do what Aaron just did. I receive it. Come on, say it. I'll receive it. Matter of fact, give, give, give me that camera right here back. Give me that camera right here back. I speak twice fruitfulness over your life in the name of Jesus. Throw your hands in the air and receive it. I speak twice fruitful. That's what a blessing really looks like. Matter of fact, you're gonna be blown away. I'm prophesying to somebody, you're gonna be blown away all of a sudden at the fruitfulness that multiplies in your life. <laughs> Number four, and I'll be done, you're blessed to be favored. We, we get grace and mercy so mixed up. When, when we screw up, we say, well, I need grace. No, you need mercy. You know, if, 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 if you stole something, if you, if, you, if, if you stole grapes, store owner catches you, they're gonna prosecute you, you don't need grace, you need mercy because you're a thief, and you should be prosecuted. So you need somebody to have mercy on you. Somebody say mercy. So, so we always get that wrong, I need grace. No, you're not saying you need grace. You're, say, you're not saying give me some grace. You're saying give me, I throw myself, you don't say I throw myself at the grace of the court. Say I throw myself at the mercy of the court. But grace empowers you not to do the thing where you need mercy. So, so if you steal grapes and that store owner, you, you say, please don't prosecute me. He said, okay, I'm gonna show you mercy. That's mercy. 
you got mercy. But grace would help you never steal grapes again. So a lot of people run around preaching grace. What they really mean is they're preaching mercy. Saying, well, we just need to have more grace. We gotta have more grace. Yeah, we need more grace, but if you have more grace, then you're empowered to not act like an idiot. And you quit needing mercy in that area. So grace is unmerited favor. Somebody say favor. Jacob, as I said, his name means deceiver. He was a second born. He came out pressing for a blessing. <laughs> he was striving for success. He grasped for something that seemed out of reach, even in the womb. Jacob's life, watch this, it was woven in worry, it was soaked in struggle, and it was given to grief. And then he sees his grandson, and something changes. I, I, I'm gonna switch because he's playing those keys. You're gonna be, you're gonna be Jacob. You're not old either, but but you're gonna be Jacob. Give me my two, give me my two uh, grandsons. You just kneel down here, Sam, and kneel right down here. And let, let, me see, let me give you the reference so you can look it up. Genesis 48, 11. Y'all can write that down, look it up later. Y'all can write that down, look it up later. But, but here, it says in, in Genesis 48, 11, it says, Oh, Jacob, blind. But for the first time, he sees. He had seen life through struggle. He had seen life through his pain. He had seen life through, 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 through his inadequacies and his failures and the hurt and disappointment of others. And Joseph puts the boys there. He positions them the way he should. And, and old man Jacob says to, to Joseph, he says, I never thought I'd see you. I never expected to see my son. I thought he had died. He said, but here I see my grandson. That's grace. That, see, mercy keeps you from getting what you deserve, but grace gives you something you don't deserve. And he says, I, I didn't strive for this. I didn't jockey for position for this moment. All I did, all I can do is receive it, and freely I've received, freely I'm going to give. He, said, he, he, says, he says, Joseph, he says, son, I never expected to see you, but God let me <laughs> see my grandson. And he goes to bless him, crossing his hands, and he reaches out to bless him. And like I said, his son tries to stop him, and he does it. And he says, no, 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 I'm not blind, I'm not confused for the first time in my life, I've got it right. Because here's the one who really should have been overlooked. I'm gonna bless them both. And he says, don't worry, this one, Manasseh will be blessed. But he says, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not, I'm gonna bless them both beyond what they deserve, but I'm gonna bless him. And, and look for just a moment, if that camera's on it, what is he making? A cross. What is that a symbol of? God the Father looked down at humanity and Jesus hanging on a cross when he said, my Father, my Father, why have you forsaken <laughs> And the Father reached out and took his right hand and he blessed you. He blessed you. He blessed me. He blessed us who did not deserve it. And Jesus ended up at the right hand of the Father and Jesus is blessed. And, but Jesus chose to take a second position so that in Christ we could be blessed with every spiritual blessing. And I wanna tell you something right now in your home, you gotta realize that the cross makes all the difference. The cross is why you're favored. The cross means that God picks you. He picks you. He receives you. He loves you. Thank you, guys. Remember.
remember the blessing is never earned by works. It's received by faith or by grace through faith. So right now, bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face toward you.